Hi guys, welcome back aboard Athena. It's only been a couple of days since I published my last video. That video ended with a bit of a cliffhanger and I'm sorry about that. So I figured I'd better hurry up and get busy shooting the next video, this video. With a little bit of luck I should be able to publish this video tonight. If not, I'll just stick with my original plan on publishing on Sundays like I usually do. Let's start by taking a look at the mistake I made at the very end of the last video. <laughs> Most annoying for sure, but I think I might be able to use the new countertop anyways, but we'll see. I was using this router with a flush cutting bit to trim the edge of the countertop. I did that because having a trimmed countertop would make it a lot easier for me to figure out where to cut the hole for the sink. I think the cause of my mistake is this bit here. As you can see the ball bearing here is really loose and wiggly and it's not supposed to be like that. This is what it's supposed to be like. Whatever the cause of my mistake, I now have these gouges here in my countertop and they're about two or three millimeters deep. So luckily the gouges aren't that deep and I think they'll get covered up by the teak molding that'll go around the edge of the countertop. These two pieces of teak molding are for the edge of the countertop and this is for the access hole into the fridge. It looks like the molding covers up my mistake. Just for a quick comparison, this is the new molding, this is the old, and I gotta say I much prefer the look of the new one. Before I put away that piece of teak molding, let's just go ahead and cut the hole for the sink. This is the sink I've ordered, and I've just taken a close look at it for the first time, and I'm not really all that pleased. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but there's some excess material here, about 1.5 millimeters or so. On the other side of the sink, there's a notch here, and these two sides, this side and this side, they don't look like they're parallel. I've uh, placed an order for a stainless steel sink from you guys, and, and it showed up a few weeks ago, and I've just taken a closer look at it, and there are a couple of manufacturing faults. I know this might make me sound like the worst customer ever, but there's just no way I'm paying over a hundred bucks for a sink with a manufacturing fault like this one. I mean that, that is just shoddy workmanship. There's no way around it. Nope, this is going back for sure. With a finish like this, it's almost like this sink was designed to be countersunk or mounted underneath the countertop, but that isn't stated anywhere on their website. So I'm guessing it's just shoddy workmanship. But uh, yeah, I'll package this up, send it back to them, and we'll see what happens. The fact that I can't use that sink puts a little bit of a kink in my plans for today. I'd like to have the sink placed before I put up the compressor for the fridge, just to make sure that I have decent access to the compressor, but there's no way I'm waiting another week to hook up the fridge, so let's just forge ahead. A little earlier this week, I swung by the boat and I caulked the seams inside of the fridge to seal them up. Just for the fun of it, I decided to use one of these caulking tool thingies here, and this thing is horrible. I'd say don't waste your money. I'd much prefer to do what I've always done, and that's just to use my finger. And the trick to doing that is just a bit of soapy water. If you don't use soapy water, the uh, caulk is going to stick to your fingers. But if you just dip your finger in a bit of soapy water, the caulking won't stick to your finger. So long story short, the inside of the fridge is all caulked and ready. I still need to put the lid on the box for the fridge, but before doing that, we should probably take a quick peek in the manual for the compressor kit. I want to see if they mention anything about how to mount the evaporator. The manual is pretty good, but it doesn't tell me exactly how to mount the evaporator. So let's just take a quick look at the evaporator. This is what came in the box, besides the compressor, of course. And it looks like these are the bits for mounting the evaporator to the fridge. It looks like we've got four spacers and some screws to mount the evaporator. In the bottom of the evaporator there are two grooves and two of these spacers seems to match that. The other two spacers are just flat so I'm guessing these are for the top and the others are for the bottom. In a previous video I asked you guys to vote on the uh, orientation of the evaporator. Last I checked 94% of you guys agreed with me that vertically would be the best solution in this case. So let's see if we can figure out where to mount the evaporator. I want to mount this as close as possible to the top of the fridge. So I've got three options over here, over here, or over here. By mounting it to the forward part of the fridge, I'll have the easiest access to the bottom of the fridge from this part over here. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. 
But before mounting this, I'd better figure out if this is long enough to actually reach the compressor. So let's see if we can find a good spot for the compressor. I think that is where I'll put the compressor. And it looks like I'll just about be able to connect the evaporator to the compressor. This is where I'll mount the evaporator, but I think I'll hold off on until tomorrow to do that because I still need to put the lid on and that needs to be glued on and I need to cock the seam that's up here. So if I do that now, then tomorrow I should be able to hook everything up. Jeez, this should have been its own nine part series. Of course, I need some way of leading this out through the box. So I'm just gonna cut a slit here and then leave the evaporator inside of the box and put the lid on. Something along the lines of this. Now once I've assembled everything, I'll shove a bit of foam in there and caulk it and make it look nice. Before I start gluing on the lid, I'm just gonna make absolutely sure I don't accidentally sigaflex this in place so that I can't move the evaporator tomorrow. That would kind of suck. This is just a bit of paper towel inside of a plastic bag. While the Sikaflex is curing, I'm just gonna use a bit of masking tape to secure the lid. And just like that, it's the next day. Late last night, I swung by the boat and I took care of all the caulking inside of the fridge and I mounted the evaporator. So this is what the box looks like now. Next step is to figure out how to lead this to the compressor. I've placed the compressor on its mount down here. It's not clicked in yet. This is just to see how everything lines up. This is the old shelf from the area underneath the sink and I'm not gonna reuse this because it's in pretty bad shape, but let's use this to see if we can figure out how to route that little tube to the compressor. The compressor is neatly tucked away underneath this shelf here and if I can leave that tube out somewhere in here, well it would be a very neat and clean installation so let's see if I can do that. I'll drill a hole somewhere around here and these are adjustable so I can always push those out further towards the hole if I need to. The manual says to use a one and a half inch hole saw to cut the hole to lead the quick couplings through. Unfortunately my hole saw set has gone missing. And well, I gotta stop letting people borrow my dang tools. But fortunately, I picked up this extremely cheap set of Forstner bits a few weeks ago. This entire set was like five bucks, so I'm not expecting a lot. Ooh. So I've drilled the hole through this and I've removed the notch of the shelf here so that I can lead the tubing through here. As you can see here, I've removed the mount for the compressor and I've started sanding this surface because it still needs one more coat of paint. The reason for that last coat of paint isn't because my OCD has gone into overdrive, it has more to do with ease of cleaning. I want this to be silky smooth, it's gonna be a lot easier to wipe down if it is, and right now I can still feel a few high spots. Silky smooth. Everything is sanded, wiped down and ready for paint. So let's start painting. Let's get painting. Oh, and I forgot to mention this foam roller is gonna give me a really smooth finish. Today is the third day. Today is Sunday. I promised you guys this video today, so come hell or high water, today's the day that dang fridge gets hooked up. Yesterday I got two coats of paint on everything and four coats of paint on the exposed edges in the holes I've cut and that little notch in the shelf. So everything here should be good to go. I also caulked the top of the fridge yesterday. I masked off the area and put down a bead of caulk. Then I used my finger and some soapy water to smooth out the bead, just like I showed you earlier in this video. Then it was just a matter of removing the masking tape and smoothing out that bead for a nice finish. And this is what the top of the fridge looks like now. This, to me at least, is totally acceptable. Enough yammering on, let's get this box on its shelf. This is for the hot water for the forward shower and this runs right behind the fridge. So before shoving the fridge in there, I'm just gonna put a little bit of insulation on this. 
There's just one last thing to do before putting the fridge on its shelf, and that is to remove this protective film. I've managed to put the fridge on its shelf and leave that tiny tube to the uh, compressor, but I gotta say, dealing with that tiny tube is just as terrifying as the first time I did it about Obelix. Bending it and coiling it up like this, it just feels so... Ugh. But hey, if I've managed to wreck it, I can just place an order for a new evaporator and replace it. It won't be that bad, it's just a matter of time and money. But let's get on to the next terrifying part, and that's the quick couplings. And that's these things here. They connect the evaporator to the compressor. I'm glad that's over. Now I need to figure out where to put this. This is the control box. This can be hooked up either inside the fridge or outside the fridge, but this part here needs to be attached to the evaporator. Turns out this capillary tube here isn't really long enough to reach anywhere outside the fridge, so I'll have to install the control box inside of the fridge. These are the wires from the old fridge installation and they just about seem to be able to reach. Of course, I'll replace these wires when I rewire the entire boat, but just to test the fridge, it's very convenient they're here. All that's left to do now is to hook these up. This is 12 volts and this is from the control box. The connections are labeled clearly on the compressor right behind the quick couplings. Okay, that should be it. Hmm, I turned off the fridge before turning on the power and the fridge is running. And I haven't turned it on and it's still in the off position. So the good news is that the evaporator is cold so the system is working. It might just be the control box that's messed up. So, so I've just spent the last 45 minutes going over everything, checking everything, just trying to find the fault. And it turns out there is no fault and the answer is even in the manual. On this model, if you want to turn off the fridge on the control box, there's a bit of a resistance you need to turn past. and. I didn't do that. So yeah, the fridge is in perfect working order. I set the thermostat to its lowest possible setting and I put this lid on top and I've just left it for a while and the compressor is just turned off and it's nice and cool in there. So yeah, I guess the fridge is working. I've tidied up a bit here and strapped everything down to hopefully avoid any vibration sounds. Yesterday I made a new shelf for the area underneath the sink. So let's see if this fits. Not too shabby. And with a bit of teak molding on there, it looks awesome. I'm pretty pleased with the way the fridge turned out and also the location of the compressor. And best of all, I finally managed to get it hooked up and it's working, at least after I found that fault. <clears throat> now, I had a bunch of other stuff I wanted to show you in this video, but that's gonna have to wait till next weekend because after I've switched to 4K, well, the uh, time it takes for me to edit these videos, then upload, and then for YouTube to do their processing is around five or six hours. So if I wanna publish this video today, I better get a move on. Now next weekend, hopefully my uh, four millimeter plywood will have showed up and I can then do the final assembly on the galley, but we'll see. Okay guys, that is gonna be it for this video. See you. Yukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.